Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 20 career mode here for our second season in MotoGP. And we're about to do the Czech Grand Prix, which I believe is round 11 of the season. So is that just before? It's actually just after the summer break. So we've actually got a few weeks to advance first. So we've got to get through all those to get to that point. So we've got a notification on the technical staff. We'll just leave it until we get right to the Czech Republic and then we'll have a look at all the notifications together. So then looking at the technical staff management, we've got three different people all applying for this same job. So Bethany Davies, massive improvements in some areas, but really bad on the engine there then. Again, pretty much the same for Miku Suzaki. And Antonio Neto, well, he's just really bad. In fact, all these people aren't worth it, I don't think. I don't think they're any better than who we've already got. We obviously just signed him as well. So if we go to our junior team, then actually I might have wasted some weeks of development here. I think that was probably not a very good idea for me to just skip all those weeks, actually. So we can get plus 3% on the bike development, plus 2% on the reliability. To be honest, they've been crashing a little bit more lately, so I could probably do with a little bit more reliability. Uh, but I do want a bit more bike development so we can develop the bike. So we'll get that sorted. Having a look at the finance section then. It's all about prestige gain, really, but I will go for the reliability on here because obviously they have been crashing a little bit more lately. They hadn't really crashed at all before. And then looking at the rider section, this is all about really just improving their skills. So this is reliability here, but we've already done one upgrade to upgrade that, so I think I'm going to go for plus three performance in the race, just to make them a little bit quicker. So we're actually below a million now, so we've got to watch out for that on the credits. We can't upgrade the bike anymore, can we? No, there's still not enough points. So then, before we head into the Czech Grand Prix, let's have a look at the championship standings. So Mark Marquez actually took quite a big chunk out of my championship lead at the last race. Same with Jack Miller, well, pretty much all the riders, because we finished 14th place at the Kimi Ring. I'm not sure why it was wet, I had no heat in the tyres, so I basically just couldn't ride, so I was really slow in qualifying, really slow in the race. But as you can see, there's been a few chops and changes here. I can't really remember where exactly everybody else finished, I didn't take up much of a look. But Marquez brought my lead down quite a bit, but it's still nearly 90 points, so it's nothing to worry about. In the team's championship, I don't even know if that lead came down or not. Uh, to be honest, I think Rins and Mir didn't, didn't do too bad in the race, so I think they got us plenty of constructors points still well, well plenty of teams points but in the constructor championship then down to a 75 point lead it's not the end of the world again we've got massive leads in all the championships so losing a couple of points in the last episode wasn't the end of the world so then i'll head into the czech gp now hopefully we've got better pace here than we did last year because we're absolutely appalling at this track last year but let's head into it and i'll see you in qualifying one so then, as you can see, it's actually raining in this qualifying one session. And once again, like last week, it's going to be raining the whole weekend. So this could actually be a really tough race for us. Uh, last season in Bruno, it was actually also raining for, I think, was it the whole weekend? Or maybe in the, one of the sessions it was dry. But either way, we had no pace regardless. But I'm hope, hoping that this is not a glitch, because before this, we've only had fully dry weekends. And then all of a sudden now, we're getting fully wet weekends. I'm not even getting cloudy weather or anything like that, so I'm hoping... But this is not a glitch where um, I'm just going to get fully wet weekends for a long time now until I get back to dry or something. Uh, but anyway, in this session then we've got Brad Binder, Franco Morbidelli, Takaki Nakagami, Ike Lekwona, Cal Crutchlow, Danilo Petrucci, Alasia Spagro, Francesco Bagnaia, Jorge Martin, Joan Zarco, Tito Rabat, Alex Marquez and then of course myself. So then obviously heavy rain so it doesn't particularly matter what time of the session you go out in so we're going to go out right at the start then. On a set of soft softs, hopefully I can actually get the temperature in the tyres this week. So here we go through the final turn then. The temperature doesn't look great, to be honest, on the tyres so far, but you never know. We won't know until we've done a lap or two. But that was my main problem at the Kimi Ring. I couldn't get any... Well, I don't know the track really as well. That doesn't help. But I couldn't get any heat in the tyres. Couldn't stop the bike. And right now, I'm struggling to get some heat in as well, to be honest. But usually the first lap is a bit more difficult. So I'm going to put the control up a little bit. But I'm going to leave it on four. I think since it is raining, but the front tyre has really, really not got anything through it. And we can't stop. I've got off into the gravel here just going to gonna avoid this BMW wall because that could be damaged and that would be the session over. So I think then we'll have to just complete the rest of this lap and then I'll join you at the end of it once I've got some more heat in the tyres and we completed this lap. So then as we come up towards the line to start the actual proper first flying lap because we just had a 208 there, I spent the whole lap just putting some heat in the tyres. Can't even get the power down in first gear at all, which is a shame because first gear is a really good gear to use on this game. So 
So 65,000 away in that first sector. So nearly six tenths away in the second sector. So the AI found massive time there. Still six tenths away. So we're going to definitely need to do another lap after this one. That's for sure. So 1.8 seconds away, 2.012. So coming towards the line then, what's this lap going to be? 2 minute point five, which actually takes us to 7th place. So we're not back of the grid anymore. But we will need to do another run in this one. I don't think we're really going to get through, if I'm honest. So here we go then, out for our second run of the session. It will be the last one as well, with only 2 minutes to go. We'll just finish our lap and start another one. So coming towards the line then, this lap is not going to be good enough. But let's see what we can do on this very last one. So cut us off the line then, is it going to be good enough? No, it's not. So then, the two riders that have gone through are Jean Zarco and Franco Morbidelli then. I find myself down in 10th position, just ahead of Cal Crutchlow, Tito Rabat and Aleish Espagaro. They are just overpowered in the wet. They're overpowered at Bruno and they're overpowered in the wet. So, yeah, that's what you get. 1.1 seconds off. But I've cleared off in some races, so, you know, you can't complain too much. It is a bit annoying that coming into this weekend, I already knew I wasn't going to get out of Q1. Hopefully we actually get credits this time, even if my Moto3 riders just get a sum, because in the last episode we didn't get any credits at all, which was quite weird, I thought, which is actually how we've dropped below a million. But we were very, very close to Laquona and Martin. Maybe if I hadn't made one mistake in that lap or something, I would have got up to 8th place. But, I mean, it's, it's you know, between 20th and 18th on the grid. Either way, I'm not in a good position for the race. So then, next thing to do is to head into our Moto3 race. Hopefully they can do a little bit better than I have. But let's find out. So then, Daisy Jackson starting 12th place. Where's Manuel Hernandez? 19th. So actually, he's been out-qualified by Jackson. And unfortunately, he's outside the qualifying objective as well. So he's not going to get us any points for that. But hopefully, they can both get in the top 15 in the race. Let's get this one started and see how they get on. So then we're on board with Daisy Jackson waiting for the lights to go out here at Bruno. Lights on, away we go. Yama has actually had a pretty bad start for the front row by the looks of it. But Daisy Jackson's coming alongside... Dennis Foggia, as we go down towards the first corner, obviously last race, Manuel Hernandez was absolutely unbelievable in the rain. He was super, super fast, but unfortunately he had that crash, didn't he, where he lost the front. I thought that perhaps he tangled with someone, but no, he just washed the front out on his own. You could see it on the footage, but I'd actually missed it because I was looking at Daisy at that time. So Daisy, unlike normal, oh, I was going to say she hasn't made up any position, but she's made up one now as they both go flying past Rodrigo. But it looks like Hernandez is already looking for a move around the outside of Daisy. Can he put it off? They both go around the outside of quite a few riders. That's probably a dangerous thing to do. But Hernandez then sat in 12th place. Is he going to get up into 11th to be one behind Daisy? I think he... Oh, well, now he's out of 13th, apparently. So Daisy, Daisy's back down into 11th. So neither of my riders... Well, actually, Hernandez has had a very good start. Jax has just had an, an average start. She's not lost position, so it's not bad or anything like that. And the leaders are still right in front of them. Is that Kaito Toba trying to go around the outside? I think it is. But that's not going to work out for him. That's allowed Hernandez to get up the inside of him. So now I think my bikes are running line of Stern in 11th and 12th place. McPhee a little bit wide there. So McPhee not doing quite as well as he did in the last race. Lopez trying to go around the outside of McPhee. And oh, Jackson sliding that rear tyre. Trying to get up the inside. Suzuki has already cleared off at the front. But Jackson's trying to attack John McPhee. And she can't quite do it. Toba still trying to go around the outside of Hernandez. And he dives it up the inside. But he's still not pulled it off. So Hernandez staying ahead of Kaito Toba, staying ahead of Gabby Rodrigo, and now he's actually got ahead of Daisy Jackson as well. As we go down towards the Schwartz curve, my two bikes going side by side. Please don't crash into each other. You both had a crash in the last two races. One at Assam, one at the Kimi Ring. And she's just pushed Antonelli out of the way. Jackson's pushed Antonelli out of the way. And I think that might have allowed Hernandez to get through. They're still side by side as they got towards the uphill chicane. But Antonelli getting absolutely destroyed there. Well, on the outside goes Manuel Hernandez. Is he going to be able to stick it on the inside? Oh, yes, he is. Through that second part of the chicane. So Manuel now up into 10th place. But they're still side by side of Horsepower Hill. Jackson's back in front because he's compromised his exit. Jackson's going for a move on John McPhee. Can she get up the inside of him into Horizon? It looks like Hernandez is still looking for the move on her as well. Right the outside. Don't try and pass them both there, Hernandez. So Hernandez still on the inside of Jackson. McPhee now still in the way of her a little bit. Uh, I was going to say McPhee, but Antonelli's almost getting in the battle as well. Hernandez going past McPhee. I think they're both going past McPhee now. Jackson is as well. As they go down towards the first corner on the inside of McPhee. Yes, they've both got past him. So they're now up into ninth and 10th positions in this race. But Hernandez is not done with Jackson yet. You can tell. 
he's going to be ready to try and go past her at any point, but I think he is a wet weather specialist, supposedly. So I think that might be why he's so fast in the race. But he's had a fantastic start anyway. 19th on the grid to 10th in one lap. That's a fantastic start. And on the inside, he's looking at Jackson now. If I had Team Orders, I would probably let make Jackson get out of the way because it looks like she is definitely holding up Manuel here. Here comes Jackson then up Horsepower Hill. She's in the search room with Mercedes. She actually put a little bit of time into Hernandez over this lap. He's reared a little bit of it back in. But she does look like she's actually getting away from him a little bit. But I think he might be better through this last couple of sections. She's going on a very, very strange line there. That's definitely going to compromise her exit. That actually might allow Hernandez to get the slipstream on the start-finish straight. Suzuki then has absolutely left the field behind. The rest of the pack actually quite close. So my two riders definitely still got a shot at something decent. Running ninth to 10th though already, for me, is decent. But Yama Masia just ahead of them. Can they both try and get past him? So then at the start of this penultimate lap, they're still sat in the same positions, but Messiah has just got ahead of Tony Arbolina. So Arbolina might be dropping back a little bit, which could be an easy overtake for Jackson or for Hernandez. And I don't think these two are fully settled with either because the gap between them is not massive. And I feel like Hernandez could be just saving something for a last lap attempt at his teammate. So during this lap, it's actually changed again. And Fanati has now been overtaken by Arbolina. So Fanati is the rider dropping through the pack. And Jackson has caught right up to the back of Romano. So hopefully both of them could go for it. Oh, I thought she was looking for the dive then. But she hasn't quite been able to get close enough for that. I was thinking if she was going for that, she was going down. But she was just having a little bit of a look. Suzuki is absolutely gone. Vietti's got a little bit further ahead. But actually, to be honest, both of my riders have been very good in this race. Because they are actually very close to the leaders. Even though they're only in ninth and 10th. Which is still a great result. Don't get me wrong. But they're very, very close to the actual race leaders. And they actually did both overtake Antonelli as well in the race who was a championship leader at one point well he still is fighting for the championship but he was the leader at one point he actually might still be the leader I'm not 100% sure on that one but come on Jackson come on see if you can pass Fernati down this straight and will that, that will then leave Hernandez the rest of the laps to try and do it as well but actually she's taking a little bit of time to get behind him really and make a decent pass Hernandez is definitely catching now and it looks like Antonelli's on his way as well which is bad news because we know Antonelli has got serious pace and he is really close up to the back of them. I think Hernandez actually might be looking for a move or Jackson down here into this right-hander because he's closer to Jackson now than Jackson is to Fanati. So at the inside looks Hernandez, but he can't do anything for now. Just don't crash. Just try and keep Antonelli behind. If he can't get past Fanati, it's fine. Just stick together. But she's sliding. She is struggling a little bit for tire wear. Now, if we have a look at Hernandez, actually both in pretty much the same boat tire wear wise I guess it's scripted for the AI or it's just fake because I don't think they even really get tire wear but oh Antonelli I think Antonelli might have just hit Hernandez up the back there that was that was close but I think that actually might have saved Jackson because Antonelli is all over the back now of Hernandez so he's got to focus on defending from Nicolo Antonelli rather than attacking his teammate and that actually does give Jackson the opportunity to potentially pass Fanati at the end of this lap but she's going to have to try and make her move quickly. They are running out of corners rapidly on this final lap. So through the trots curve. And Antonelli, once again, has gone so, so wide. That's probably cost him actually a shot at overtaking Hernandez. So Hernandez might actually be looking back at the back of his teammate once again. Because she still hasn't got past Fanati. And Fanati is clearly holding up this train. Although, to be fair, Hernandez has kind of been stuck behind Jackson for most of the race. But up Horsepower Hill, then they go. Is Hernandez going to be able to have a look? Because Jackson's not close enough to Fanati for anything. So as they go towards Horizons now, she's looking for the inside. But actually, that's probably not the best line because that might allow Hernandez taking the better line. He's all over the back of her now through the last corner. I think he's setting her up for a bit of a switch back. But I don't think he's going to quite have it. He's going to get in the slipstream as they come up towards the line. It's going to be ninth and tenth. Who's going to get ninth, though? It's Jackson. Jackson comes home ninth and Manuel Hernandez in tenth. So Tatsuki Suzuki absolutely disappeared in that race and winning by three and a half seconds ahead of Vietti in second, Mino third, Foggia fourth, Lopez then in fifth place on the Husqvarna. So I think the uh, the, the season mod uh, that's on for the MotoGP classes that interfered with the update that changed the performance of Moto3, which I think makes sense because the performance should be consistent throughout the whole season because it has been changed quite a lot in Moto3, so I don't want to mess up the championship, so I actually think I will keep it like that for the duration of this season. So then, Daisy Jackson ends up ninth place, Manuel Hernandez in 10th, so, so close, but a good race from both of them, it must be said. In the championship, then, Alonso Lopez moves ahead of John McPhee once again. Obviously, McPhee had a great result in the Kimi ring and moved ahead of him. Now only seven points, not seven points, I was reading that completely wrong. There's 13 points between the two riders. They've both been actually quite consistent this season. They've both had a crash now, and I think, to be fair, that's going to happen. They're both rookies. 
I'm not too fussed about that really. So if we have a look at the team's championship then, they both beat the Patronus boys. And yes, we actually gained a decent amount of points back on the Patronus riders there. So both of them obviously outscoring McPhee. So on their own, they both beat McPhee's total. But then combined, they've actually beaten it by quite a bit. We were 14 points behind them, I believe. And now we're only five once again. So the battle for sixth place is definitely still on here after a good race for the biker racing team. But that's it for them for Moto3. Time to head into the MotoGP race. And it's going to be another hard one. I'm going to I'm gonna really, really struggle in this race like I did in the Kimi ring. Purely because the AI is so good at this track and it's also the wet and they're really good in the wet as well. So uh, yeah, the odds are really stacked against us here. So we're down here on the grid then. Marc Marquez on pole position ahead of Jean Mir in second place there. So a very good qualifying by the Suzuki rider. As you can see, we've got the 100th anniversary livery on as well. That's from Race Department. Very good mod there. And then we've got Maverick Vinales in third position on the grid then. Now, I think I'm actually going to go for a scrub set of tyres. So the tyres that we're using in qualifying, I think I'm going to go with those. Now, you're probably wondering why. And to be honest, it's just one last ditch attempt to try and find some sort of pace. Fresh tyres didn't really help me out in the Kimi ring. The tyres barely wear at all in the rain, so I think it's worth going for. We might hit some troubles later on in the race, but we're going to be slow anyway. So I'm just going to give it all I've got. I have to try and stop making up so much time on the braking, because that's my main strength, and you just can't do that on the wet on this game. You just can't brake that late just because you can get no front temperature. So, hopefully we can try and have a decent first lap, but the last time in the Kimi ring, we didn't, so we'll have to see. We are seconds away from the start of the race. The riders are coming down to the start of the Czech Grand Prix here in Brno. So we are going to need an absolute miracle for a decent result here in this race. My teammate, of course, second place on the grid, so hopefully he can do something good. But waiting for the lights to go out here, then out of the Czech Republic. Lights out, and away we go. Trying to just turn off the line, stop the wheeling. Again, this wheelie was still pretty bad, but not too bad, actually. We haven't lost any place off the start. It's all down, Takaki Akigami in a bike. It just literally flew vertically up in the air. I don't even know who that was. I think it was Jorge Martin. There's been another high side in the middle of the pack. It's one of the Rebs Honda. I think it might be Polis Spagaro has gone down in the middle of the pack as well. Unless it was Mark Marquez. I doubt he'd be that far down the order. But there's been some chaos on this first up already. So we're already up to 14th place. We're diving on the inside of a few riders. Jack Miller just pinching us towards the apex. Although he wasn't really. We were just coming in really, really hot. And sort of coming into the side of him almost. We're up to 12th place. It's already been a fantastic start. of getting eight positions in the first set. There's been quite a few crashes. I have no idea who's actually down in this race and who isn't. So as we hit the brakes then, Brad Binder just ahead of us through turn five. I've just clipped the back of Brad Binder. We've gone past him now. So a couple of uh, videos in a row hitting people at the back and then getting past them. So we're up to 11th place. We're almost up into the top 10, which actually wouldn't be the worst result in the world. The rear is still sliding. We're on the power then. Looking for a move up the inside of Jack Miller. Up into the top 10 then now. Oh, the front almost went then on the inside. He's actually going to hold it back around the outside. Bang Nye's having a look to try and get past us. But we're still behind Miller. The rear is stepping out. It's the same for everybody. No one has got any grip on this first half. I think it was the same last year, actually, if I remember correctly. So down the hill then on the brakes. Into this right-hander. We've ran in very wide into the Kevin Schwantz corner. Up the inside again goes Jack Miller. But I'm going to try and run it around the outside. So up into the top 10 we go there, Franco Morbidelli up next. And it's actually just dawned on me that uh, the last episode that we had was our worst ever finish because it's the first time we actually ever finished outside the top 10 in the whole career mode at the Kimi ring. So no wonder I felt so slow, although the AI are much more competitive in this second season with the performance mods on sort of uh, making everybody sort of a top level AI. So it is harder to get a decent result even when you're struggling. We're right behind Morbidelli. Morbidelli's looking for a move on the inside of Oliveira. Can he pull it off? There's absolutely no grip for anybody on this first lap. But I think the scrub set of tyres has actually been quite a good call. I have no idea where anybody is because the timing tower is not working. But here we go, flying past Morbidelli up into ninth place now then. So Miguel Oliveira on the KTM up next. So Marquez then, 2 minute point four on that lap. 201.1 for myself. Mir doing another fast lap of the race. Go on, Mir. So at the end of this lap then... Two minute point nine for myself, only half a second behind Oliveira, so we actually are catching him. So as we caught towards the line at the end of this lap, I think Jean Mir has actually taken the lead of the race. But we're close up to Oliveira massively, we go for the move into turn one, we're probably going to run a little bit wide, but I close up on him way more than I expected, which is probably going to cost me a bit of time, could even cost me a place of Jack Miller behind, because Jack Miller is all over the back of me now, if you can see, he's pretty close to us. But we've just lost a lot of time to Oliveira, I caught him so much then, I had to dive to the inside, I just got caught off guard. 
So it's about to start the penultimate lap, then I think Marquez has dropped down to third now. We're in the situation with Oliveira. This time, I'm not going to be caught out. We're going for the move on the inside of Miguel. Oh, we've had a little bit of contact there. He definitely wants to hang it around the outside. Here comes Miller up the inside. We're going three wide through this first corner. I'm trying to get on the power as early as I can. Side by side with Miguel Oliveira. We've got a bit better drive side by side with him now. Up into eighth position. So we've finally taken another spot, but Valentino is way too far in front of us to catch him up. So Vinales, fast as that 59.6. So as we come up towards the line, what's my time going to be? 201.0. So we're actually 1.7 seconds behind Rossi, who's behind Davizioso. And that's Marquez actually now in front of him. So Marquez could end up finishing one place in front of us if he keeps struggling on this last lap. So Joan Mir then takes his first win of his career. As we come out the last corner, we're going to come home in eighth place then here at Bruno, which all things considered isn't a bad result. So then Joan Mir wins ahead of Maverick Vinales in second position, Fabio Quattararo in third, Alex Rins in fourth. So decent points then for Suzuki in both the teams and the Constructors Championship. Valentino Rossi ends up in fifth place, sixth for Mark Marquez, seventh for Andrea De Vizioso. Dobby just couldn't quite get him, and eighth for myself. We actually had respective pace we were we had similar pace to the riders around us there ninth then fourth franco morbidelli we actually caught quite a bit up to that group in front of us rossi marcus and davizioso but i made a mistake at the penultimate turn and it obviously didn't really matter too much anyway because the race was almost over we haven't met the race or the qualifying goal but all in all actually considering it was a wet race i think that's quite a good result because the ai are absolutely ridiculous at Brno and they're absolutely ridiculous in the rain so yeah, not too bad. To only be, what? Well, Vinales did a 59.6. That's, that's just ridiculous. But if we get rid of the two Yamahas then and Rins with the 59s, we were only about eight tenths off Jean Mir's very fastest lap. So we were in a similar ballpark. We weren't too bad. But yeah, we, we, uh, we didn't have to pace that weekend. We actually probably got the maximum result we could have done. So I'm quite happy with that, really. So Mark Marquez gains like a couple more points on us. I think it actually might literally be two points. So... Championship lead basically hasn't changed. We actually extended it over Jack Miller in third place because we still beat him in the race, even though even though it was such a poor race for myself. I still managed to beat Jack Miller. Fabio Quattararo actually bringing himself into this championship now. He had a terrible start, terrible start to the season. And now he's not that far away from Marquez and Miller. So once again, this championship looking extremely close. Rossi moves down one, Vinales moves up a couple. Dovi and Vinales now joint on points there, two points by Miller. Mir is bringing himself into it as well, so this is looking like a close championship for second and below. And in the team's championship then, of course, Rins and Mir both bringing home a decent amount of points, so we actually have a 138 point lead in the team's championship. Uh, Monster Energy Yamaha actually moved back ahead of Repsol Honda, because the, obviously Paulo Spago crashed and the, both of their bikes got on the podium. And then in the Constructors' Championship, Jar Mir won it. So we actually extend our lead in the Constructors' Championship, because Jar Mir got us a win. Suzuki looking really, really good this season then. Obviously, uh, Rins has had a second position. That was his highest. He almost got the win in Austin, but just lost out to Davizioso. And I obviously only just caught them up on the last lap after the crash at the first corner. But Jean Mir takes a victory here for Suzuki. So, Constructors' Championship, we're still doing really, really well because that's another win. So, yeah, Suzuki absolutely dominating, 90-point lead. But let's go have a look at the replay then because I want to see what happened on that first lap. That was absolutely crazy. That was an absolutely crazy first lap. I want to have a look at some of the incidents that happened. So this is on board with Jorge Martin. Then down towards the first corner. He just hits Takaki Nakagami up the back. And they both crash. But then his bike just launched vertically. I don't know what happened there. Let's see if we can slow this down. Uh, so here we go then. So that, well, we'll watch the collision in slow-mo first. So uh, obviously going down the straight. It's one of those things where he's got a really good slipstream. And he's just misjudged it. Just clipped into Nakagami. A little bit different than we've seen some of the collision from behind. And if we watch the bike, the bike just hits... It hits that bit of tarmac here, so the grass ends, you can see, there's a bit of tarmac. It just hits that, it just launches. Let's see if we go to photo mode. See, so well, okay, this is how high up in the air it's put me, so that gives you an idea how high the bike went. Look at this! <laughs> Look at this! What? What is this? Oh my, wow. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable how high his bike has gone, and I bet it continued to break, oh, we're actually on board with the bike now, so yeah, that was about the peak of its height, it's rolled over, and oh, it's going to slam down hard, isn't it, this is going to be terminal damage for sure, yeah, that is a written off bike there, oh, he actually got back on that, that's the most realistic thing I've ever seen in this game, 
And really, there has been some unrealistic things that have happened in this game. So this is on board with Polis Bagro then, down towards the first corner. He's actually in a very, very good position right now. He's between a few of the riders. He's right behind Franco Morbidelli. He gets on the power. He gets... Oh, he... Okay, I don't know. That was a weird crash. Hang on, we need to try and slow that down because I didn't really see that in real time. So he's getting on the power. He's sliding. He's sliding, he's sliding. He's just caught it. He's getting back on the power again. And then he just get Yeah, he gets tapped around by Miller. So actually, Jack Miller played a part in that crash. So like he did to us last season, actually. I believe it was Miller last season. Ramming up the inside when a bike is sliding. He's done it again. But this time, he's took Polis Bagro out of the race. So if we watch that in real time from on board Jack Miller. Wow, it's just uh, showing us the Jorge Martin bike all the way up in the air again. So this is real time then on board with Miller. Going into the first corner, then the sliding, the sliding, he slides, just clips him there. And that's actually what lost him his momentum and how he lost the place to uh, Miguel Oliveira in the first place. But yeah, a bit of a collision there, and that took Polis Bagger out of the race. So then, let's head back into the career hub now, and let's see what we've gained from this weekend. Nothing on my front. I think I'll have lost reputation again, unfortunately. But let's see if we got anything from the Moto3. So then we actually lose 14,100 reputation points, which takes us down to 602,900 reputation. So actually quite a good weekend from Moto3. 299 prestige, that is a nice amount to gain. So both race results, 135 prestige from Jackson getting 9th, 125 for Hernandez getting 10th, and Jackson also got us that 39 for getting us in the top four rows of the grid. So well done to Daisy Jackson for that one, getting us a few extra points. And we get 350 research data, so that's always nice to see as well. And the credits have actually gone up, but it hasn't shown me the screen. So, yeah, that's a little bit weird. I think when you actually don't gain any yourself, there must still be a check in the game to be like, oh, don't show him the credit screen because he didn't gain any. But my Moto3 team has still gained some. So we're actually up to a million, 44,310 credits now. So we're back over a million once again. I don't think there should be any notifications. So actually, is a team planning for next year notification then. Uh, for the technical director, obviously we hired him earlier on in the year. William White uh, seems a lot worse in most areas. He, he's cheaper as well, so I'm just guessing he's just not as good. So that would probably be, probably be White. So that sort of brings this episode to a close then. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that one. The racing in MotoGP was quite close. Obviously we had a little bit of, of, of a tense moment with Oliveira and Miller. And on the first lap, a lot of chaos. Martin's bike just flying vertically upwards for whatever reason. I don't really know why that happened, but... It did for some reason. In Moto3, it wasn't so interesting. They basically got those positions on the first lap and then literally held on to them for the rest of the race. They didn't actually overtake anybody else. They got close, and they got close to passing each other as well in the last lap, but yeah, not much really happening too much. So if it's a bit of a shorter episode, I do apologise, but there's not a massive amount I can do. But I've not really got anything else to say, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that episode. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next one.